Hello, Gumtown, and today we're here with Miss Karen Jones, and she's a candidate for Montgomery City Council District 7. How you doing, Karen? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. good. Thanks for being with us today. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself and why, what made you decide to run for City Council? Well, I was born and raised in Montgomery, Alabama, mm -hmm. um, in Mobile Heights. I was born in Washington Park, 1800 Hill Street, not a hospital. Mm -hmm. My grandmother delivered me. I have seven brothers, mm -hmm. mother and father, everybody's from Montgomery, mm -hmm. and a four-year-old German Shepherd, first with Mason Jones. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so um, I moved away mm -hmm. in 99, and I returned back to Montgomery in 2009. Mm -hmm. My mother was ill, so I came back mm -hmm. to Montgomery. And when I came back to Montgomery, mm -hmm. I started attending a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. City council meetings, mm -hmm. board of education meetings, county commission meetings, uh, different board of adjustment, different meetings. Mm -hmm. And I noticed mm -hmm. that politics, mm -hmm. no one was following policy. Wow. And the law, mm -hmm. from the state law, federal law, to Alabama Act 618, which the city council is supposed to mm -hmm. abide by. Mm -hmm. And when I noticed that, um, it was very um, disturbing to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm a passionate person. And when you show them what the law says and they refute it or just um, want to do what they want to do and ignore the law i have a problem with that because you want citizens mm -hmm. to model behavior right and to follow the law mm -hmm. but when our lawmakers are not following the law it's a problem mm -hmm. so they basically unethical and corruption mm -hmm. going on when you don't follow the law mm -hmm. and expect others to do so and so i became more involved but primarily i've been involved in civic activities all of my life mm -hmm. so it was just, it came natural to yeah. me. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, well that's good. Now, what are some of your concerns with uh, District 7? That's why I have my notebook out, because I have so many concerns mm -hmm. with my district, which is um, a predominantly historical district. Mm -hmm. And so it is old, so I would like to preserve mm -hmm. some of the history. Okay. However, bring about um, modernization to our district. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of people move out of our district mm -hmm. or forced to be moved out because our city council excessively used 1153B-1. Uh, um, what they say is uh, blighted property mm -hmm. to demolish it. However, they're not giving property owners um, proper notice. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're even doing mm -hmm. some of the damages to the homes. Mm -hmm. So my district, um, you want to preserve it. It's on okay. the Civil Rights Trail. Mm -hmm. Some of it is on the Civil Rights Trail. Mm -hmm. You had your Rosa Parks, mm -hmm. um, the Grex, yeah. Cleveland Court. Mm -hmm. And then you go down Fairview Avenue and I remember as a child, those big houses at Christmas time, mm -hmm. beautiful homes. And you see now most of the owners, I guess, are elderly now or yeah. have moved away. Mm -hmm. And you don't have that anymore. So I want to bring back um, what we used to have mm -hmm. as a community mm -hmm. and the pride that we used to have in our community. Mm -hmm. Basic services are being denied in my community. Mm -hmm. That's an issue for me. It's an issue when I call 911 and I'm being forwarded to an answering machine. Oh, wow. And it's an issue um, when you take our community police department from the farmer's market and the relationship between the police and the citizens um, kind of deteriorates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that we used to have because we have in District 7 a plethora Mm -hmm. of Fortune 500 companies. I mean, from Applebee's to Zaxby's. Mm -hmm. And literally from mm -hmm. Applebee's to Zaxby's and mm -hmm. everything in between. Walgreens, we have pharmacies, we have schools, 
we have um, grocery stores, the farmers market, Alabama State, mm -hmm. some of that. I mean, we Huntington College. Mm -hmm. It is a blessed community, a blessed district. And I don't want to see my district unattended right. or ill attended by um, a council person, uh, my opposition. Um, we have an entertainment uh, district up East Fairview Avenue. Mm -hmm. And it's ironic that you see a lot of people inebriated going to their cars because you can drink mm -hmm. outside in the entertainment district. But you drive down Fairview Avenue mm -hmm. and say go to the Elks, mm -hmm. which is probably a mile and a half, not even a mile down the street. Mm -hmm. And you go into your car, and if you're inebriated, and I don't condone drunk driving, period. But nine times out of ten, that individual will get pulled over or even stopped for public intoxication. Wow. Whereas if you're in the uh, entertainment district, mm -hmm. You just are free to just drive. And another thing, the city council uh, ordinance, I was reading that the clubs or uh, lounges are not supposed to be within, I think, 250 feet mm -hmm. of a residential area. Mm -hmm. Well, we see they don't do that in the entertainment district. They have condos or townhomes right up East Fairview Avenue. Mm -hmm. So they ignore ordinances wow. and in addition uh, I would because one of the duties of the city council is to create ordinances mm -hmm. review the budget adopt the budget question the budget my opposition wanted to um, pay a he suggested to pay a firm to go over the budget with them wow. it's a simple process of reading mm -hmm. Get a calculator and adding and subtracting is really not hard mm -hmm. to do this um, but we're ignoring the duties mm -hmm. as subscribed in Alabama Act 618 and I have an issue with that mm -hmm. be because we have so many backwards ordinances or so many things that we're not following you have the model behavior mm -hmm. and that's good and that leads to my next question um, because with the um, different leadership roles you have in the city government and the county government, do we, do you think that it's time that we need some more leaders in office? Yeah, mm -hmm. we uh, we need effective and efficient leaders, mm -hmm. um, ones who will be held accountable, mm -hmm. ones who are supposed to even you know I you know I like to research and read, so section three point one eight the examination of records. Each month, the city council mm -hmm. supposed to uh, provide citizens with like an expenditure report in mm -hmm. the local newspaper or whatever. Mm -hmm. I have not seen that mm -hmm. ever. Oh, wow. And so we don't know where our funds are being distributed mm -hmm. to. So I think we're just lacking leadership mm -hmm. in this city, um, effective leadership, okay. efficient leadership. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good. So basically, and this also goes into our next question, we need more effective leaders, we need more efficient leaders. So how will you be effective and how will you be efficient in District 7? Well, um, I, I always have been in the community. I have my master's in public administration from the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Policy is my thing. Mm -hmm. I like to read, I like to research, I like to ask questions, mm -hmm. and I like people to give me answers. Not off the you know, top of your head that what you think you need to show me mm -hmm. according to the law mm -hmm. what the proper answer, uh, accurate answer is. Um, and I think what I can bring, what I know I can bring, are positive solutions. Mm -hmm. Most of the issues that we deal with within our city, mm -hmm. minuscule, very small, uh, to larger cities. We just don't have people who 
who are following up, who are engaging, researching. It is your job. Mm -hmm. Do your job. And that is simple to me. Do your job. Just do your job. Just do, huh? your, just do, do your, your job. job. Okay, then now, um, our um, elections are August 25th. Yes. So, why is it important to vote, especially with this upcoming election? Like, why should the community go out to vote? It is literally, literally uh, a historical camp election this, this year. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to elect our first black mayor. Mm -hmm. But a mayor is no better than their council mm -hmm. person. You want a strong council behind a great mayor. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the city will burn, literally. It will sink. Um, I think I can bring to the table, um, I know I can, solution, mm -hmm. strong leadership. Mm -hmm. I'm not a go along to get along person. Right. Unbought. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy living in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere soon, uh, unless God sees fit for me to go. But I think it, now is the time now's that the time. people mm -hmm. need to get up, mm -hmm. go vote. It's so much work to do in our city. We're on the cusp of becoming, in my opinion, where Atlanta was in probably the turn of the millennium. Mm -hmm. We really are becoming a black mecca. Mm -hmm. And most people don't realize, I'm looking at the uh, voter, voter statistics, and we're about 60% black in the city of Montgomery. Okay. The numbers have shifted. Mm -hmm. However, we need active voters mm -hmm. to get up, go and vote, the apathy level. And it says a lot when you have so many people who are actively registered, but do not go and vote. Yeah, yeah. So it's something going on wrong in which I feel like we need to encourage and elevate people to get up and get out and vote mm -hmm. because it is a serious time. Mm -hmm. um, our crime is gradually going up. Yeah. Our youth are facing disparities after disparities. They're dropping out of school. They don't have anything to do. And I would love to form a youth council. Mm -hmm. um, so like pages that are in the house or right, in right. DC because they need to learn mm -hmm. uh, government and policy and procedures mm -hmm. and how to accurately um, follow mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. and create laws. So um, it's very important that we get people in our office who understand policy and procedures, who follow policies and procedures. And it's just time, it's critical. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Now one last thing, now how can the community contact you if they wanna volunteer for the campaign, make a donation, or just have any questions and concerns? How can they get in touch with you? They can um, find me on Facebook. I don't have a fluffy name. It's just Karen Jones, K-A-R-E-N-J-O-N-E-S. Mm -hmm. Or you can find my um, website, Jones for District 7 at nationbuilder.com. Mm -hmm. Or you can find me on Facebook, uh, Jones for D-I-S-T, the number 7, mm -hmm. and uh, backslash facebook.com or Type it in the Facebook search and you'll find me. And my telephone number, 450-4483. I'm easy to find because I'm always in the community. Mm -hmm. Most people will see me. So um, you can go to Wells Fargo, the committee to elect Karen Jones. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where I have my account. You can mail your donations in P.O. Box 